the next thing I'd like to hit you boys up with is uh, this returning production rankings. Tony, we'll start with you because the one team that comes to mind where there was a stark uh, lopsided end of the spectrum returning or lack of returning production for Ohio State that jumps out at me right out of the gate is the 2016 edition that just lost just tons of talent and the returning production and the, the, the age of the team and experience of the team was lowest in the power five, if not including most of the group of five, if not entirety college football. Well, we know that that team had an issue in the playoffs, but up until then we're able to ride it home at 11 and one. So for these teams at the top, and there's only a few of them, it seems to be less of an issue in returning production because they're plugging in the next high four star, but how important do you think it is for this Ohio state team based on what you've perceived in the past? I, I think it's important to have a bunch of returning production considering you have a brand new defense. So you have experienced players who uh, are more um, ready to learn and to implement stuff. And it's not a huge change defensively, but it's enough of a change that, you don't want to be relying on a whole bunch of new guys to to take care of it. However, there are, are also a, a number of young players who are ready to take that next step. So you have a new defense, you have uh, new coaches, everybody has a clean slate. So it's going to be interesting to watch as the the inexperienced guys try to jump over the the returning uh, production. But I believe Ohio State has a, a large amount of a high percentage of returning production on defense. And then it almost doesn't ma matter kind of what they have returning on in on offense because look what they had returning last year, like nothing. And then they still produced the top offense in the nation. So now with so much offense returning, you expect them to do the same thing. Defensively, I think um, with, with what they've got returning, they're also going to kick it up a notch with a more aggressive defense. So I think it's a good combination of the experience – and then the young, hungry guys pushing those guys mostly on defense to either pick it up or get out of the way. We saw some of that last year with Steel Chambers and, and Taraja Mitchell, like, move aside. I, this is me now. I, I've taken the job. And there's going to be some more of that, I think, this year. Yeah, that uh, returning uh, production ranking was kind of an interesting stat. I presume, it, you know, you think about it, you have all the passing yardage back. With Stroud and McCord, I don't know what Miller had, but very paltry numbers. And then uh, all the rushing numbers are back except for Teague, and I don't even know what he rushed for, maybe three or 400 yards, maybe. Uh, but Williams and Henderson had the lion's share of that, and they're back. And then I think receiving is where you take the big hit. I mean, those are kind of divided into three big chunks, and only one of those three chunks is back. With Smith and the Jigba, you lose Olave and Wilson. So two-thirds of your receiving is gone. But, uh, again, I don't know how they're figuring it or factoring if they're adding all of those three disciplines together and then calculating a percentage on that. But uh, at any rate, um, yeah, I think, it's, uh, I think it's a great thing, obviously, when you have – such a prolific receiver back, plus guys with tremendous potential like Emeka Buka, Marvin Harrison Jr., as we saw in the Rose Bowl, is ready to step right in and be a frontline guy. Um, Mayan Williams, if they keep him, if he stays in the fold, he's a tremendous changeup back uh, with Henderson with some game breaking ability. I mean, we've seen him, uh, you know, get into the open field and, and, and put away a couple big plays. So he's not necessarily just your your uh, one and two yard back. He he can be a guy that if he breaks that tackle at the line of scrimmage or breaks contain, he can hit a home run just same as uh, Travion Henderson can. And then of course Stroud. I mean, I think the potential is there for him to push toward what Haskins did, and the records that he set uh, in 2018 are potentially in play. And of course. There's been a lot of 2018 talk this year, or this these last three, four weeks with uh, Urban Meyer made a mistake in hindsight. You know, Ryan Day, they took Haskins over Burrow. 
boy, they screwed that up, didn't they? I know we've talked about a little bit, you know, here on the show and different things, but um, I put made my stance on that pretty clear that hindsight's twenty twenty, and you know, you can't can't re legislate something that 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 happened in real time uh, almost four years ago. So um, I don't know. Just uh, I think it bears. Uh, you know, just the thought that Ohio State's going to be up there again based on what they have coming back. I think it's a pretty strong assertion to make that. But, again, you still need a lot of luck. I mean, if C.J. Stroud breaks his leg, then it's on somebody else to pick up the ball and, and run with it, or in that case, throw it. And, uh, you know, if something happens, Jackson Smith, the Jigba, and now they lock up Marvin Harrison Jr., you know, what, what happens then? So, you know, it – it's a starting point, and I think that's good. And Ohio State's had tremendous luck in terms of injuries. They haven't had – I mean, Josh Proctor was a guy that they were counting on last year who they lost for the season. But those type of injuries have been few and far between for Ohio State in recent years. And so, um, you know, continue on the path. I know uh, some of the guys were tweeting out today about Matt drills today. Hats off to the guys and their – 6 a.m. Uh, mat drills, you know, good good luck with all that. It's important on February 9th that everyone's up and at them at 5.15 a.m. and got a smile on their face and, and ready to run through a brick wall. So, 